Hello Internet and welcome to another Star Citizen video with Haverside. Today we are talking money and more specifically about having the best financial start to your Star Citizen adventure in 2023. But most importantly, this guide will also help you make money as a brand new player in your first hours of gameplay. It is also patch 3.18 safe at the time of recording, so when that releases, this will also work then too. The best bit of all though, is that you need nothing but your starter ship for getting around, and some time to watch this guide in full, so do ensure you do that, and then you can put all of that and information into action. So do you want to make money as a new player? If so, then join me as we get right down to the nitty gritty of how to have the best start in Star Citizen in 2023 and the 3.18 patch, step by step. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome new player, this guide will assume that you have learned the basics of movement, flying around and getting around the verse. If you are new and need some guidance then check out my video series on getting started as a new player using the info card above. If you're already watching this playlist then you've already got to this video and you've already done just that. If you're new to my channel or haven't seen we are doing a giveaway at the moment for a CAR Pisces Rescue with code blue paint and lifetime insurance. Check the link in the description on how to enter. Let's get to it guys, let's earn some money. The best bit of all for this entire process is that you need nothing but your starter ship for getting around and some time to watch this guide in full. So do ensure you do that and then once you've done, we can put all this information into action and earn some cash. As a new player, you're going to start the game with literally 1000 AUEC, which you'll get literally nowhere fast. You won't be able to do much with it, other than, well, nothing. So you're going to need to earn some money. So I'd highly recommend before you even create your account, make sure you've done that with a referral code. You'll get an extra 5,000 AUEC if you start an account with a referral code, which you should be doing. If you need a code, you can use mine in the description. But even with this, you're still not going to be swimming in currency. So you're going to want to earn some so you can do stuff. So, but before we head off for our adventure to earn good currency, a little bit of preparation is needed as we're going to need some equipment, or you might end up back in station faster than you know it. We will be heading to a cave later to loot lots of items that we can sell, so take some time and get prepared. We're going to need a few things. We're going to need some heavy armor first. We're going to need a decent backpack. We're going to need a gun of some form. And we're going to need to unlock bounty hunting missions and also crusader security missions. So we're going to go through the process to do that. To acquire these requirements and items will take a very little amount of time if you know what you're doing. But that's why I'm here, so we're going to go through that process in full. We're going to want to buy the equipment, so we'll complete a couple of missions to get some starting money. By all means, you can go off and explore some places or run some basic missions like the Protect site, which has items within the mission, so you can kill guys and loot their corpses, or you can take stuff from the friendlies if you wanted to. But I personally find that that takes a bit more time. We want to be efficient here, so it's much easier and faster, safer to just run a couple of missions and gain some initial starting capital. For this, I would recommend running the Unauthorized Surveillance Detective mission, which is a mission that you can obtain around the Crusader area. You can run it twice to obtain 40,000 in cash, 20,000 each time, which will allow us to purchase a set of gear and replace it if we die, but it also gives us a spare bit of cash, and the best bit is, it takes about 10 minutes to do. With this starting cash, we'll be able to purchase a full set of heavy armor, which will provide us with some of the best combat protection, but it will also allow us to carry a heavy backpack, allowing for more items to be stored in. This will set us back around 14,000 AUEC, add a gun, and then we'll need a roughly around 18 to 20,000 to replace it. So let's ensure we can cover that a few times, hence why 40,000 cover allows us to do that. Before heading out to do any of this, I would highly recommend that you head over to Crew L1, which is the refinery station just outside Crusader Space, and set your respawn to that location. This is completely optional, but in the event of the unfortunate death, it helps that to speed up getting back into play quicker. We will also base ourselves out of Port Olazar in the station around Crusader for the purpose of this guide and earning cash. So once you've set your respawn point, head over to Port Olazar because that's where we'll be basing from. So step one in our preparation steps is to get some starting capital. So we're going to run the Unauthorized Surveillance Detective mission twice. This mission is accepted under the Mercenary tab of your Moby Grass Contracts window, and it will award 20,000 AUEC each time you complete it. It takes roughly 5 to 10 minutes to complete it, if that. But it involves us flying over to the target location, which is a comma ray around a planet around one of the moons of Crusader, and destroying three monitor stations that the hostiles have placed. Since update 3.18 is coming, I wanted to ensure that this mission was doable on the update. 
and I am pleased to say that the mission is possible even with ships from the pledge packs like the Aurora and the Mustang. The mission on the PTU, however, has been updated and features a lot more hostiles than there were before. But as long as we stick to the three targets that we're here for, which are the three monitor stations, we are there to destroy them. They're stationary. As long as we focus on them, we won't have any trouble. Just keep moving, power to your shields, and just focus on the three targets. And once they're destroyed, head out of the location and accept the mission again to complete it for the second time to accumulate that starting 40,000 ABC. Do not panic about the hostiles. There will be a few on your overview in 3.18, but they can't really shoot for shit. For the avoidance of doubt, this mission was run on the PTU, and this footage is directly from the PTU, so you can see just how straightforward the mission is. To find the monitor stations that you need to destroy, approach the location once you get to it, and use the tab button to scan. You're looking for the little box icon that indicates where the target is. So just approach that target once you find it, and have found it via scanning, and then destroy it. Don't do what I do, fly directly to it, because you very nearly hit it and just end up dead, so just be very cautious, approach it with a bit of less speed than you would do normally, and destroy it. You can do this with an Aurora, you can do it with a Mustang, it's a great little mission to get some starting capital. Once you've done this, head out back to Port Olazar, rearm, repair, and get ready for step two. We want to ensure that we are maximizing our earning potential as quickly as possible. So to do this, we need to unlock a mission. The mission itself is called Clear Criminal Nest, but to do this, we're going to need to do a couple of missions to unlock it. Since we're going to a cave later, this mission involves us going to this cave and it involves us destroying the hostiles in this cave. So we're gonna be doing that anyway, as the process involves us looting them to earn money, which is what we're there for, so we might as well do this as well. This mission allows us to earn an extra 30,000 just for doing what we're going to be doing anyway, so it's worth doing. So let's unlock that now. So the first mission that we need to run to complete this is called the Tracker Training Permit Certification. You'll find this within the Bounty Hunting tab of your Moby Glass. So if you pop onto the Contracts menu, click on the Bounty Hunting tab, you'll find it there. So make sure you accept it. This mission can spawn the target anywhere in Stanton. We want to ensure that the target is around one of the Crusader moons to save us having to travel all over the verse. To just cycle the mission, accept it, which will cost you 500 AUEC each time, but we've earned this money to do this. Abandon it and then accept it again until you find one that is around Selin, Daymar, or any other moon in the Crusader area. Once you've accepted the mission, head over to the target location, find the target and neutralize it. Only focus on the target that you are there to kill, which is advertised on your, on your actual heads up display. You do not need to worry about his friends, kill him, and get back to Port Alazar. The second mission that we need to complete to unlock the Clear Criminal Nest mission is the Verified Freelancer Bounty Assessment, which is a Crusader security mission from Crusader Security. What we need to do is just accept the mission. It is a ship-to-ship -ship combat mission, just like the one we did before, and the target will be around Crusader space. If it is in an asteroid belt, I would highly recommend that you take your time, approach with caution, and don't hit the asteroids, otherwise you tend to have accidents like this. So take your time, be cautious, kill the target, and then once done, get back to Port Olazar. Once you're back in Port Olazar and you're facing the ASOP terminals just like this, we're going to head over to the Garrison Defense Store to purchase some gear. So if you head through this door here and on the right hand side as you come out of here is Garrison Defense. Inside this building is a terminal where we can purchase some equipment. So we need some heavy armor. You can buy any heavy armor you like. I like the red armor so I will be getting the ADP armor. Buy every piece that comes for it, so the legs, the arms and the chest. And then don't forget to buy a helmet. So we, I take the Balor helmet, which is the red helmet. And then you also need a decent backpack. So we want a large backpack as we're using heavy armor. So if you search Moro, M-O-R-O, you can buy one of the Moro backpacks. Lastly, what we'll also want is a gun. So we'll need to do this by turning around and heading to the shop across the store from us. And inside there is another terminal and you can use that to purchase a rifle. I personally recommend taking a P4-AR rifle. Don't forget, you got the gun so you'll want some magazines. So if you just search the terminal with P4, it will literally bring up the gun and the ammo. Once you've got all this equipment, don't forget to equip it. 
We're going to need it now, so equip the armor and let's get going. Before you head out to move to the cave area, I would always recommend searching your Moby Glass contracts for the Clear Criminal Nest mission. You'll find it under the Bounty tab. Once it's there, it's a free 30,000 AUEC, and it will also give you a HUD icon to the mission location, which is the cave, which is so much more useful than going there manually. When I say free, I literally mean we're going to the cave anyway, so this mission just has us kill the guys inside it, so we're doing that anyway, so it's literally extra free cash. So I won't say no. This mission won't be available every time you go, so always check before you leave. It's just really handy to have some extra cash when it's there. So now we have everything prepared for, we can now proceed with our task of earning glorious AUEC. We will be exploring Daymar Cave, which is a fun little adventure to the moon called Daymar, which is around Crusader. So you can start heading over there now. It allows us to venture deep into a mining cave that has hostile forces within it and they've taken the cave over to use it for mining. These dudes not only shoot back, but they'll do the cave mining for us, so all we have to do is end their existence and loot their gemstones. And while we're doing that, we'll look out for loot boxes that we can loot for additional earnings. Overall values of the cave runs in themselves vary due to the power of the RNG loot fairy. Sometimes you'll have lots of gems, sometimes you won't have as many, but you're also relying on the cave spawning loot boxes. We're after the green small loot containers, they have the biggest chance of spawning lots of gems. Other boxes like the medical boxes and the armor boxes are something we just aren't interested in. We want to see the nice green loot boxes so if the loot, the loot fairy loves us and we're in luck then hopefully we'll be earning lots of AUEC. In comparison to other methods of gameplay as a brand new player with no time on your belt this method is likely to be one of the best go-to methods that I can highly recommend to you for earning currency in your early stages of gameplay. Even now of hours of gameplay and earning big ships like the C2 and the Mole I still come back to playing in Daymar Cave because I find the gameplay fun, the varied in earnings just makes it a bit more enjoyable than just going out and mining and or doing other methods of gameplay. Profits can and do vary as I mentioned but if you do the run multiple times then the runs will average themselves out. I've had runs as low as 50,000 AUEC and I've had them up to 200,000 though the higher value is often less common. Each run takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes, including travel time, if you are focused. But once you're used to it, well, getting to the location itself, you'll probably find that shortening down to around 15 minutes in total. You can even pick up that optional mission that we open, unlocked earlier, the Clear Criminal Nest mission, which earns an additional 30,000 for the run, just for eliminating the hostiles. So we're there to do that anyway, as I said before, so we might as well add that to our totals. Over eight runs, you can see on screen the earnings that I have achieved by doing the complete run of the cave and with any additional mission that I was able to accept during that run. Even if we set our expectations low and say 100,000 AUEC per run, which is pretty average for this without the mission, then you'll still be hard pressed to find a faster method of earning cash as a new player, with no decent ships and with little to no investment beyond your time or needing to grind reputation to unlock the methods like bounty hunting, Basically, this is ready to go from the get-go, as soon as you get into game. In comparison to other methods of gameplay, if you have the cap capability to do them, for example, mining, when you're using the Prospector, will earn you 250,000 AUEC per run, but that can take you 30 to minutes to an hour if you are lucky to find the rocks. Bounty hunting, on the other hand, will earn you up to 500,000 per hour, but that would be using a ship like the Eclipse or another ship capable of doing them. But again, you won't have these ships yet at the beginning, so you need to start somewhere. And that's where this process really comes in handy. The only trouble with this method is the odd risk of player versus player combat. I don't come across it very often, but there is the risk of doing so. You will find that this is a popular method for earning some currency, so you'll need to be prepared for player versus player combat. Now, often people that are there are there to do exactly what you are doing. So as long as you don't shoot them, they probably won't shoot you back. But do you risk that? If you see someone, maybe run away. I tend to make sure, you know, if I'm spooked, then I tend to shoot back. But that's just me. Uh, but, you know, there is risk of getting a crime spat. But that is only if they report it, if you kill them first. So really, you know, I don't condone illegal activities. But, you know, we're here, we're killing people anyway. So really... You know, as long as we're making funny money and having fun, then that is all you need to worry about. What you do is up to you. 
Running this method, however, will open up a lot more avenues for your gameplay, so it is providing you with the cash to do it. So what are we waiting for, really? Let's go. If you're lucky enough to have the Clear Criminal Nest mission before you leave Port Olizar, then you can literally follow it to get to the mission location. The mission itself, the Clear Criminal Nest mission, is found under the Bounties tab in the Moby Glass when it's there, but it's extremely important to take it as it's free cash as we've discussed. It does put a HUD icon on your map, so all you need to do is head over to an orbital marker around Daymar that appears closest to the planet, and then travel directly to the planet from space. You can use the HUD icon to the, the mission as your point of entry, and once you're there, land next to the cave. If you don't have this mission, then you're going to need to head over to Daymar, and you'll want to go down to one of the points of interest, which is Wolf Point Aid Shelter. Once you're there, get directly above it, and then we're going to rotate our ship using the HUD's angle to point towards heading 280. Once you're pointing towards 280, you can head in that direction for 112 kilometers and you will then eventually reach some mountains. You'll know you're there as you'll hit three sets of them, but the final one, the third set, is the ones we're passing now with a distinct ridge on the right hand side of it. Once you pass this, just approach slowly and you should see the cave directly in front of you during daytime hours and it's very distinct, it should stand out. This is what it will look like when you get close enough. Now we're at the cave. All we've got to do is complete the run and we'll be earning sweet AUEC. So land your ship and get out of it and get ready to go. Get out of the ship and we're going to start looking for crates outside. There's always usually a crate here, but sometimes it doesn't spawn. So just ensure that you are checking this. What we're looking for ideally is the green crates. That one back there was a medical crate, so it's really no good to us. Although you can obviously restock your medical supplies using these crates. In this cave, there's a guy up ahead usually, but he does patrol the whole entrance part here, so he can be anywhere, so look out for him. Don't forget to loot him. What you want to do is loot his chest piece. The gems are always in the chest piece, and these are what we are here for. If the guy has a backpack, which some of them do, then the gems will be in the backpack. So just be cautious, make sure you're checking the right place. There's no point checking other parts of his suit because there won't be anything in them. There's only one place for the gems to be. Just drag them over to your backpack and they will stay there. Filter your backpack by another function, for example like vehicles, because then you can just literally drop the gems in and it won't, you won't have any issues doing that. There's usually three other guys in this area here, so ensure that you've killed them all before you can start looting because you don't want to get taken out while, while you're checking in inventory. This is the green small standard chest that I was on about. These can drop a lot of gems. I wasn't that lucky on this one, but they can drop up to 15, 20 gems. This is another location for a, a crate, so always check just around that corner. There can also be some in other places in this entrance area, so do be sure to check it fully. You'll get used to where the spawn points are. As you come up this main drag pit here, there's always two guys around this corner. We'll need to loot them. One's got a backpack, so we'll make sure that we are looting them. This guy's backpack had a nice amount of gems in it, which is always a nice thing to see. So we've just dragged all of those over to our main inventory. Once they're looted, we need to head on further down into the cave. Now it does split when we go down here to the left and the right. I always go to the right because there's a there's always usually a crate up here. Around this corner behind these white boxes is a crate. Nice small standard container. So again, we'll drag those, those gems to the backpack. And then I just jump down the cliff side here. I don't even worry about taking too much damage because I don't usually take damage. If I do, I take one health point off, so I'm really not bothered about that. Running through this part here, following the pink flare, the glow sticks, there'll be another dude up ahead, but again, he does patrol this whole little bit and this open area here, so when you see him, just take him out and then loot his gems. All of the bad guys within this cave have gems. It's why we're here. Jump across this open area, and in this last area, there's usually five guys. We need to take them all out. I wouldn't loot any of them, but do bear in mind where they are, just so you mentally remember where they are, because they are literally in the dark. So make sure you've taken them all out, and then loot them all. At this point in the game, if you have got the mission for the Clear Criminal Nest, you will have just earned yourself 30,000 AUEC by killing the last dudes in this area. Completing that mission is so simple. We're here to kill them anyway, because we want their gems. So at this point, you've already made money, even before selling the gems.
Obviously, just take some time while you're here, just making sure that you have looted all of them, because you can easily lose track of where they are. So just remember where you've killed them, and that's, that's all you need to worry about. Once you've cleared all the gems, we need to head directly in front of where we came in. There's another entrance with a pink glow stick. We need to crawl under this area. You can crawl by pressing and holding X to go down. Don't hit the wall like I did. Once you've crouched down, crawled down, you can crawl through the cubby hole to the final area. Now, normally in this final area, there is no hostiles at all, so you don't have to worry about that. There is, of course, that risk of a player, but I've never had it happen yet. So just come into this area, gun out anyway, and make sure you're checking the area. The beds over here, there can be a crate in front of it and at the rear, like I have got here. So just make sure you're checking them and dragging them to your infantry if there is any gems. When looting in this cave, I would avoid anything other than gems. You don't want to fill up on crap. So just make sure you are checking. The last crate is usually up on this shelf here. As you can see, it is just an infantry full of uh, gear, so we don't need it. Once you've done that, log out. Just log out of the game and log back in. You're logging in station, and all you need to do is pop on downstairs to the admin terminal. The admin terminal here in Port Olizar is right by the ASOP terminals. Just literally click the cell tab and select all the gems, and you can see how much you made in that run. In that run, it took less than 10 minutes, 15 if you include the travel time, and I've earned 100,000. Just over. If you had the mission, that would have been 130,000. So you can then sell the gems, but before you do that, I would recommend that you move them to your infantry. A bit of a pain prior to 3.18 due to the fact that we don't have a move all button, but once 3.18 is here, you can use the move all button. The reason I suggest doing this is there has been a bug that causes the actual infantry's the bag to bug out. There's not much we can do about it until they fix it, so it's just a matter. Either sell from the, the backpack and just get a new backpack if you have the issue, or move them to your infantry, which only takes a minute or two anyway to do in 3.17.4. So it's up to you. Once you've sold your gems, you've made good money. And that is what we are here to do. Rinse and repeat. It is literally that simple. This is the process of making good money in your starting session of Star Citizen in 2023. It really is this simple. Do the run as many times as you want to do so. And one last tip, if you're in the cave and you're looting someone's infantry, use your ears as your guide. NPCs don't make noise when they move. So if you hear noise like this, you can decide whether to turn around and shoot like I did because I just didn't want to take any risk. This has been a guide on making money in Star Citizen in 2023 and 3.18. I hope you found it beneficial. If you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on earning sweet, sweet AUEC. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.